So I noticed something while I was at my college today. Uh, I went to the cafeteria, and as I'm ordering, you know, my Hawaiian pizza and Dr. Pepper, as I am wont to do, uh, a bunch of the SSW and PSW, the social services worker and the personal support workers, uh, students, come through, and they're all wearing their their hoodies or their or their you know kind of jackets type things. It's got it embroidered on the back on the you know between the shoulder blades, you know. PSW or SSW on it, and it's surprising to me that along with these jackets, <clears throat> how many of them, uh, kind of along with the, the jacket as part of their styling, incorporate the stereotypical trappings of the SJW as we as we know and def- you know, revile them, and. I can't help but think that, of course, you know, not all blue hairs, you know, all all that. But, you know, when you see people looking like the very interesting individual who assaulted Lauren Southern at the U of T rally slash protest, you can't help but think if it waddles like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it fucking smells like a duck, it might be a duck. And then I think to myself, these kids that are getting into this program, do they understand that what they're doing is signing themselves up for a career path in which they will trade the emotional reward of helping people, which they will have to trade the emotional reward of helping people, uh, off, you know, um, as the receipt, as the as what they get in exchange for giving up financial reward. <laughs> Do they realize, and did their guidance counselors tell them, did the school inform them, I doubt it, that the field that they will graduate into was already saturated, already had its hiring pool at capacity before they even started their program, and that they're only going to encounter a worse situation when they graduate? Do they realize that this is going to drive down the wages they can possibly earn and, you know, ultimately contribute to an earnings gap uh, in that case. Now, I understand. Now, if you had the right balance of PSWs and SSWs to what was needed and everything else, it wouldn't be an issue. You know, they would get paid fairly well. They would have to be be good at their jobs. In this case, I suppose the good thing is that the best candidates ought to be hired. In the you know, the, if you have a dearth of of uh, hiring candidates, you know, you can pick the best ones, and therefore the the patients are likely to get the better treatment, and, and that's great. But will these students, upon graduation and and employment, will they recognize their own culpability in essentially sabotaging their own lifetime earning potential, or? Are they going to turn around and claim that emotional labor is undervalued or devalued or, you know, it's, it's ignored? Uh, are they just going to whine about it and blame everyone else? While well, I'm sitting here in a business sales and marketing program learning that I can still go into a, a, a job that will help people. I'm actually looking at doing a placement with um, the local Habitat for Humanity branch. You know, they require business-to-business marketing and, and salespeople to, to garner sponsorships, to, gar- to garner donations. You know, there's plenty of money to be made in helping people if you know what you're doing and know the right way to go about it. You know, I accept the fact that the odds are, if, if I want to make, you know, $100,000 a year in a sales position or $100,000 really anywhere, I'm going to need to compromise on the emotional rewards and focus more on the financial rewards and use that to kind of prop up a smile. But will these PSW and SSW students understand that? Personally, I don't think they will. I think it's another, you know, this is where this whining, complaining, it's never good enough, you know, oh, woe is me, how could this possibly have happened? Where that kind of demographic is coming from. I think that schools are largely to blame now for this in lying to students because I remember my guidance department back in high school was not very transparent uh, about certain things about the post-secondary 
habitat, the post-secondary climate. And so if it happened to me, it could happen, you know, to essentially anybody or any student. Um, I would like to have think, you know, I like to think I was one of the, one of the sharp ones. So kind of just my thought for the day. You know, I, if you're an SSW or a PSW student uh, or somebody working as a, a personal support worker or a social services worker, please comment on this video. I, I do value what you do. One of my, I would probably say my best friend in the entire world um, is a child and youth worker. Um, and she understands it. And she's having trouble right now dealing with her boss. And she is getting paid less than what she is. She is worth. Um, but that's because she is actually doing more work there than anybody else and has more responsibilities and is not being paid um, in accordance with her official duties. Um, but in many cases, that won't be what goes on. It will just be, oh, my pay, no matter what, is not sufficient. Why am I, Why is it my, you know, why isn't my job field compensated better? So let me know if, again, especially if you're a PSW or an SSW or, or, or a CYW, let me know if you understood going into the field that it would be a trade-off, you'd be trading away, you know, financial reward for emotional reward in knowing that you had directly helped someone. Or if you didn't, if you didn't know, and now you're dealing with that realization and, and let me know how you're dealing with that realization. Um, are you, you know, accepting some portion of the culpability? Are you trying to externalize all of the blame? Uh, and why? If that's the case, I want to hear. I just, I just want to know why. Uh, I would like to, to come to understand you, and understand your situation. But uh, that's everything for the day. It's a little, little Viper unscripted thought of the evening. So thank you all for tuning in. And I have a video coming out very, very soon on the BSCM Ride for Change and why men's mental health and suicide prevention is such a very, very important cause for me. Oh, and remember, everybody, if you can, grow that mo out for November. Bye now.